All right, what are the challenges from transitioning, from training always in the gi to no gi grappling? And that is gonna be this week's question of the week. I am Saad Al-Aziz, the owner and head instructor of Simple Fortis Jiu-Jitsu here in San Antonio, Texas. And this question comes from my good friend Isaac, who is an active duty US Army Ranger. And he's also a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and a Judo black belt. And he's probably like 6'3", 6'4", 220 pounds and just ripped muscle. Like just a tremendous athlete and full of knowledge of martial arts and fighting in general. So he transferred to Washington DC recently and he found a school to train at that he likes, but it's they only train in no gi. So it's just no gi grappling um, for all the classes. And he's having a challenge transitioning from always training in the gi to training in no gi. And he wanted to know my thoughts on that challenge and that transition and why maybe I thought it was more difficult than we would originally maybe estimate. So the basic idea, and years ago I had a friend who was also a judo black belt who said, you know what BJJ stands for, don't you, Saad? I'm like, yeah, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And he's like, no, basically just judo. And I'm like, oh, you're a funny guy. But there was some truth in that because a lot of what we do in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu evolved from judo. So I was like, ah, take the jokes, it's okay. But if you said, well, no gi, what is no gi? And if I had to say an acronym for it, I would say BJCW. Basically, just catch wrestling. I know, y'all, so there'll be some people that are unhappy in the comments below. You'll get over it, I'll get over it. But in my opinion, when you take this gi off, whether you take it off in judo, you know, in judo with the gi on, you have a tremendous advantage over other arts with the gi on. When you take it off, now wrestlers and other arts are gonna cause you some problems. Same thing for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. With the gi on, we have a tremendous advantage over most um, grappling arts. But when you take it off, now it's a level, much more level playing field. You're doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but you're going against other arts that also specialize in training without the gi and whether they're doing catch wrestling or sambo or you know even you know some kind of collegiate or high school wrestling they can really cause you problems and so that's going to be a normal experience you know when you stop or you go from training always in the gi to no gi and you're training with people that only train no gi they are going to have an advantage and there's going to be a learning curve there and it's not like your learning curve is unique um matter of fact some of the biggest um, upsets in brazilian jiu-jitsu history have happened in no gi you know for example probably the most famous was um hoyler gracie at the abu dhabi combat classic in no gi hoyler of course is the son of elio gracie and he was going against a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu brown belt in no gi named Eddie Bravo. And Eddie had scored a victory in his first match over Gustavo Dantas, another very accomplished Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. And that was a surprise to most of us. We didn't expect Eddie to beat Gustavo Dantas. And then in his second match, he drew Hoyler Gracie. And he submitted Hoyler with a triangle choke, which shocked the world. Um, matter of fact, I'm sure if you YouTube or Google Hoyler Gracie against. Um, Eddie Bravo, you'll see the two matches that they had, and one of them is the one in ADCC where he submitted um, Hoyler. And this was quite the shock because he was a brown belt. But in no gi, the, the playing field becomes more level. So a, a junior belt could very well, or a person that is even a white belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but they're um, technically skilled in other arts like catch wrestling or sambo or you know high school collegiate wrestling like the playing field starts to level when you take this gi off um some other examples would be like you know an mma sakuraba you know they they had nicknamed him the gracie hunter because he was shocking all of us you know, like he had beat hoist gracie he beat hoyler gracie he beat henzo gracie i remember the first time he submitted um a brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt it was conan severa 
And Conan was significantly bigger and stronger than Sakuraba. And when Sakuraba submitted him, we was all shocked. It was like, what? Um, it, the playing field levels. Josh Barnett is another good example. Former UFC champion. Um, there used to be a program, uh, promotion called Metamoris. And he went on Metamoris and he went against Dean Lister. And Dean hadn't been submitted in competition in like a decade. And Dean is a very accomplished Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. And Josh Barnett submitted him. You know, it's like, what? We, you know, like beating him is one thing, but to submit him and Dean is so hard to submit. And Josh Barnett accomplished that. Um, he also went against Huron Gracie, who is the grandson of Elio Gracie and the son of Horian Gracie. And he submitted Huron Gracie in a no gi match. So it's not unheard of for, you know, junior belts or people who are not Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fighters to go into the ob to go into a no gi match and win. Um, I remember a couple years ago there was they was doing the ADCC and there was a big splash because there was a young young guy who was actually a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I think his name's uh, Nicky Rodriguez. I could be wrong, but he was a collegiate wrestler and. He surprised a lot of people because he beat like Cyborg and other well-accomplished Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts. And everybody's like, how did this blue belt Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know, beat these guys? And it's like, yeah, you know, technically he was a blue belt Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but I don't, I don't know what his belt is now. But, uh, you know, you're teaching a collegiate wrestler Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu submissions, and that's years of wrestling that... You know, like that experience doesn't just go poof and go away. Like that translates 100% in no gi. Um, also, I remember like Matt Hughes. Oh my gosh. Like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys used to get him, you know, in the UFC, you know, in his early MMA career because Matt was an amazing high school wrestler and collegiate wrestler. And then he started learning, you know, Jiu Jitsu submissions. And then, you know, like I was just stunned when he beat Hoist Gracie on the ground. Like, that was just unheard of. And then I remember when Matt Hughes went against Henzo Gracie. Henzo stood and boxed with him for three rounds. He had no intentions of going to the ground. And Henzo was one of the best BJJ fighters ever. And he didn't go to the ground with Matt Hughes because he respected that part of Matt Hughes' game. Um, or like Ricardo Almeida, another very accomplished Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, went against Matt Hughes. Matt Hughes, Put him to sleep, you know, with some kind of, I, I forget the choke that he did. But um, it was like, this guy, you know, we had taught this wrestler, you know, some submissions. And, you know, he he took his lumps. I don't know whether he was training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or whether he was training catch wrestling to improve his collegiate wrestling, you know, for MMA. But whatever he was doing, it worked. And he became phenomenal at it. And such a problem. So, I say all that to say that if you're training, you know, if you're going from the gi to no gi, there is going to be a learning curve and you're on a much more even playing field. And it's, you know, catch wrestling, I, I want to say it was, came out around the late 1800s, but well before Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So that's why I say basically just catch wrestling. When you talk about no gi grappling, we can call it Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but when the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys, Take that gi off and go against the catch wrestlers and the collegiate wrestlers and the sambo guys. Like, you know, like Khabib, you know, he's sambo champion, judo black belt, wrestled most of his career, most of his life, and UFC champion, but a white belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But if you do a no gi match against Khabib, good luck, bro. That's going to be a problem. Like, he's a phenomenally talented uh, fighter. And once you take that gi off, like, Man, the playing field has been leveled and we're really into a catch wrestling match. And so that's my thoughts on this week's question of the week. I say enjoy the learning curve and, um, you know, you'll close the gap in time. But um, there's going to be a learning curve for sure. And you've already experienced that, my friend. And just know it wherever you go in your jiu-jitsu journey, you know, like you're going to go to some schools like my school. I only do gi classes. All my classes are in gi. You'll go to some schools like, you know, say 10th Planet, all their classes are in no gi. They just do no gi because that's what they enjoy. I enjoy the gi, they enjoy no gi. You'll go to some schools where like might be 50-50 gi and no gi. 
Other schools, it's probably like 80-20. Like most classes are in gi, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and you know, like maybe a couple classes a week are in no gi. But ultimately in your journey, you have to figure out like what you enjoy doing and finding a school that does that, you know. So if you only do enjoy doing no gi, go to a no gi school because, you know, why do something that you don't enjoy? Um, I enjoy doing gi, so it's like I'm 54 years old and it's like this is my school. I'm like, yeah, I'm only going to do gi classes because that's what I enjoy. It's like life is too short, too short to do something I don't enjoy. All right. I don't want to ramble on. Um, if you got a question for next week, please file it fire below. And if you got any comments or thoughts on what I have to say, because I know there'll be some uh, YouTube troll that'll have some deep thoughts about how I don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm okay with that. Fire away. Um, and if you like this content, like and subscribe, and there'll be more stuff coming next week. All right. Ciao.